It's TV school time. WOI TV, in association with the State University of Iowa, presents another program in the Iowa TV School Time series, Adventures in Art. Today's topic, watercolor resist and crayon etching. Your teacher is Vern Thompson of the University of Iowa. Mr. Thompson. Hi there, how are you kids? And how are you? Say, I've got something really exciting today for you, and maybe you haven't ever had a chance to do it. But we're going to work with crayon etching and crayon resist. And I think you'll really have a lot of fun when you're working, especially with these two mediums, because it's a new way to work just with these plain crayons, the same that you've probably used every day that you've been in the art room in school. So I think it might be kind of fun to just take a look. I said crayon etching, and maybe some of you don't know exactly what an etching is. Well, I could best explain that by saying that it's just scratching the surface of something, and then if you were to put ink on top of those lines, you can see how the lines would show up. Well, that's exactly what an etching is, and I'll show you how to make one in just a little while. But first, I want you to take a look at a couple of pictures that I think are extremely nice that were made right at the university. And so, if we just look over here very quickly and take a look at this tremendously nice horse's head. I'll bet you'd recognize it as a horse's head, some of you, but some of you wouldn't because this is just the skull of a horse's head. And notice all of the different lines that go to make this up and give it a nice feeling of roundness and a nice feeling of movement. As you move around this, just think how much fun it would be to make an etching something like this. Now, up on top, we have another one that's very, very nice, and this is just an Iowa cornfield. And think how very, very lucky a person would be if they could make something as nice as this. Just filling the space in a very interesting manner and thinking in terms also of the very nice different relationships between the blacks and the lights because we also want to think in terms of darks and lights whenever we're working in a picture. We want to think in terms, too, of all of the different kinds of lines that we can think of. Some are thick and some are thin. And so just by variation, that's what we call variation, you can make sometimes a much, much nicer picture than just having all the same kind of lines or having all the design just exactly the same. Now, it might also be kind of fun then to take a look over here at some of these crayon etchings that were done by boys and girls who are about the same age as you are. And just think, as you look at them, how much fun they really would be to make. And first of all, we have a very nice picture of a, just a farmyard. And notice that it really looks like an Iowa farm. And we have a nice barn down here. We have all the things that go to make up a farm. We have a big road that goes back in here and disappears behind these very nice trees that break up the sky. And we have a tractor down here with a man. And we have some horses down here. And notice that there are lines and all kinds of different textures. This looks like brick, and this kind of looks like the siding on a house, just the boards. Or we have down here a texture that's kind of like grass. And over here, we have a nice texture that reminds us right away of a tree. And this is just one interpretation, of course, of a farm. Because I'll bet you could think of some of the different aspects on a farm, some of the different things that happen on the farm that might be more interesting to you. Maybe you could think in terms of a great big tractor. Or maybe, if you would like to have, you could show the lady going out, and she's working, maybe milking the cows, or possibly she might be going about other chores that you would of course have to do if you lived on a farm. So this is a very nice one. But then look over here. That's the farm and here's the city. And notice all of the different nice buildings down here. And this was actually drawn by a boy in the sixth grade and he showed us just a portion of the city that he lived in. And he's showing you one place actually that's in Iowa City down near the river and there's a big coal company down there. And you notice that he has shown a man standing over here that's a great big burly guy and he looks like the kind that would make a real good coal hauler because he's probably got a lot of muscle just like you have. So he has shown this man and here's a man looks like he's just going to work and over behind this building here he's shown by using a different kind of texture 
the buildings that are behind this one, and also a sign of the name of a hotel, and even a television aerial up here. Maybe you can't see it, and I hope you can. And behind all of these different areas that you can see, there are just thousands of different colors. There's blue and orange and yellow and red, because that's the way it's done. The color is put on, and then it's scratched through. So now that we've seen a couple of these, maybe it'd be kind of fun to take a look at some of the even lower grades than maybe you're in, and maybe this might be just the grade that you're in, grade number one, and that's who did these, and aren't they nice? It was the first grade and the second grade there. And just think of the very nice variations as far as just thinking in terms of scratching through the surface. You notice that this right away, you can see it's a vase, and there are some nice flowers coming out of the vase, and back here is a cloud, and up here is old man's son. So that as soon as I look at this right away, I feel that this possibly was done inside of the house or inside of the schoolroom, and there's the window right here, and then looking out the window, we can see all of these other things. And notice that it really helps to fill the space in that manner by putting the sun up there, because that would make it pretty blank up there with nothing at all. And so he felt that it was really necessary to fill that space nice and big, like we always do when we're drawing or painting or coloring. And so he put a nice sun up there. Then take another look at something that's very interesting, but still using all of these different kinds of flowers and so on. Here's one that I think is especially nice and just shows a gourd and it shows a real nice face of flowers again. So that flowers are very interesting and not only for this boy and girl, but also for me because I like flowers and especially I like different kinds of weeds because I think weeds are wonderful textures to work with. And I have here just a couple of them and this is some good old Iowa corn. And I think you can just see that waving out in the fields. And notice all of the different kinds of textures that you have just on a ear of corn. And look at this, a very nice shape right here. Maybe we could think in terms of just taking something as plain as a corn stalk and thinking in terms then of making a nice still life, a nice drawing through the crayon etching process that I'm going to show you and having something very nice. Or possibly you could think in terms of this. And all it is is a whole lot of thistles out on the ends of these branches. And boy, when you touch them, they're very prickly, so I don't want to touch them too much. But if you were going to draw them, maybe it'd be kind of fun to show them a lot bigger than they are. In other words, just pretend that you're looking very close and really looking very, very close to study all of these little things going on. And then, if you want to, you can change it and help it fill the space a lot better. Because that's what's fun about drawing and about art, in that you can change a lot of different things to make it your very own. Now, let's just take another look at some of these other different wonderful things that I have here on the wall. And you'll see some wheat, just plain wheat. And if you examine it closely, you can see all of these different things going on and all of the different textures. Here are some berries on a stick. And here are some more thistles. And boy, are they sharp. And here's a, a nice pod showing a, a whole lot of these little things. I'll bet you've seen them before, that if you blow them, why, they just blow all over. And that's the way they plant new ones. And they're awful sticky because they have to be sticky so that they can stick to the ground and make more and more and more of these little weeds. So it might be kind of fun to just take something like that and think in terms of drawing it very nicely in a crayon etching. Now, it might also be interesting to find that not only weeds, but a very, very simple thing like a seashell might be very interesting to think in terms of that as subject matter possibly, or just to see how very interesting something like that can be. And now here we have a real nice picture of a seashell, but I'll bet you didn't recognize it as a seashell right away. You'd have to look fairly closely because this seashell has had an x-ray picture taken of it. And that's why we can kind of see the inside of the seashell. So maybe if you examined the seashell very, very closely, you'd be able to see all of these wonderful things going on and think possibly in terms of using something like this for subject matter. Or then again, you might be able to think in terms of something as simple as just when you look up at a nice bush or maybe a tree as we have here, because this is just a tree and we're looking up towards the top of it. And look at the nice, wonderful shapes that that really shows us as far as 
just filling the space, thinking in terms of all the different textures we could have, thinking in terms of the design, and really filling up that page with a whole myriad, which just means a whole different and a lot of different kinds of things in our picture to make it more interesting. Or, well, on the other hand, we might be able to think in terms of just a simple thing like thorns. And these are just thorns that are on a rose bush, but have been enlarged greatly so that we can just really take a very close look at them. And you'll notice in one or two places, you can actually see the thorn, the end of the thorn sticking up. And I think as I look at it, I feel that right away it would be very stickly. So here's some other subject matter. Possibly you might be able to think also in terms of something as simple as the back of a duck or a pheasant. And that's what we have here. It's just the back of a pheasant showing all of the different feathers. And to me, it kind of looks like a field of, of pansies or possibly some other kind of flower that you might know about. And so, whenever you're thinking about your drawings and paintings and crayon etchings especially, why well, you want to think in terms of, of the wonderful texture possibly that even a feather would have. Or maybe you could think in terms of uh, maybe sand or even another very, very nice seashell. But this is not looking inside of it, just looking at the exterior of it. And the exterior just means looking at the outside and not being able to look through it. So that here we have some very nice lines. And just in itself, I think that this is a very nice composition with just a couple of accents of very nice color and noticing all of the different kind of lines that you could use. You might be able to have something very nice out of that. Or or maybe you could think in terms of possibly something as simple as just seaweed. Now, I'll bet that you haven't seen any seaweed unless you happen to have the good fortune to go on a real, real nice trip out maybe to the west or the east coast with mother and dad, and you could see the seaweed coming up on the shore. And this is just a picture taken of a lot of seaweed that's laying around on the beach, and they've taken a picture of it to show us, again, how close, if we really examine them, that they become very interesting shapes and could possibly be used as far as a crayon etching is concerned, because we can think in many terms. Or possibly we could think not only in terms of that, but just something like a peacock. And look at this wonderful peacock. You probably can't even see his body, but I think there are so many, many terrific and beautiful colors that it'd be a whole lot of fun to look at something as interesting, I feel, as just feathers on a peacock and the beautiful way that they almost seem to radiate that there would be the sun there. So these are just a few of the different things that we could think of when we're thinking of subject matter. The farm and all these different wonderful textures. And because I like flowers and because I like weeds a lot, I think that's what I might use as subject matter for my crayon etching. But if you're going to make one, remember to think in terms of the kind of subject matter that you would like the best. So now I'll just quickly show you the different necessary things that you need to make a nice crayon etching. So I just have plain manila paper here. It's the same kind that you have in your schoolroom. Then I have a nice big box of crayons. And the reason that I like these big crayons is because of the fact that they don't break very easy. And for that reason, then I would tell you that you have to press very, very hard on the paper in order to make sure that our crayon really is put on very thick. Because remember that we're going to have to just scratch through the surface that this crayon makes on this paper. So I'll take a fairly light color and I'll just think in terms of making an area then, just really not thinking in terms of what I'm going to put on top of it, you see. It isn't necessary to think in terms of, of the possible subject matter of making a real nice farm or anything yet, because all we have to do is fill this whole page with little areas of color. And if we were thinking possibly in terms of a farm, we might be thinking of having a tree right in this area. And because of that, we might go ahead and make this tree green. But maybe it would be fun instead if, as we were drawing it, we weren't thinking in terms of any color. And so then as we drew our tree, then our tree would be a whole lot of different colors. And that's what's really fun about them. So instead of going ahead and trying to color this very quickly, I think that I'll just maybe color in one little area and then show you the process as far as putting on the tempera paint on top of this. And you'll notice that as I work, that I work very hard and put a lot of muscle in it. And I know that you're all strong and that you'll be able to do the same thing because we want to cover this with a lot of color and all different kinds of colors. Now, now that I have that nice and thick, the next thing I can do is take my paintbrush and I use a great big one, you notice, because I, wanna, I would be thinking of doing the whole page all over with the black, covering all of the crayon. 
then I would need some tempera paint. And tempera paint is just a water-based paint. And I'll bet your teacher or your mother and dad can tell you how to make it. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in here, and then I'll paint right on top of that. But look, I'll bet you can see that that isn't going to go on too easy. So the first thing that I have to do then would be to take some soap, just plain ordinary soap, the kind that you have in the house. And when I use that, and just rub a little bit on this piece of soap, and then put it on here, Look at how smooth it goes on now. It'll go on very smooth and be very, very easy to work with as far as painting this area. So I'll just get a little bit more paint on my brush and you can see that it's really necessary that then that you have this soap right with you whenever you start to work on a crayon etching. And you can see that you just cover it fairly thick and then after that dries, you can scratch right through that surface and that's when all of the colors and all of the design starts to show up. Well, I really don't have time to let this dry, so I already have a piece of paper that's been prepared just a couple of minutes before the show went on, and so I'll just use that. And this has a lot of colors underneath it, and I'll just thumbtack it right up here to make sure that it doesn't move around on me. I'll press this one in, and then put a thumbtack right here. And now, this is the surface that I'm going to draw my crayon etching on. Now you might be wondering, well, what am I going to scratch through with? And all I use are just what we call 16 penny nails. Now you could use smaller ones. You might be able to use an old dental tool. You might be able to use just a toothpick. Well, along with that, because I could get some very nice things scratched in here, but you can see that the surface that I scratch out with this isn't too thick. So maybe I could use just a plain tongue depressor. And you all know what those are. Those are the kind of things that when you go into the doctor's office, he, as soon as you sit down, he says, I put your tongue out and he makes you make all kinds of noise just to see down your throat. Well, that's just exactly what I use. And I have cut a couple of them and you can cut them very easily just with a pair of scissors. And they'll cut very easily. And sometimes it's kind of fun to have three or four different edges so that you have a flat one and one that's curved, you see? And now if I were to take this one that I just cut and make a line on here, I think right away you'll be able to see that it's much, much thicker if you have this nice and smooth on the bottom, you see? And you get a texture as you work with it. So that now possibly I can think in terms of making a nice design just using the weeds and all of the different things as far as flowers are concerned. So in order to balance this up, since I already have a, a line up this way, maybe I could think in terms of just making a bowl over here. And I can kind of shade it down on one side like this and then maybe put a little bit back here, and then think in terms of some nice leaves coming out. And you can do a lot of different things, just thinking in terms then of the line and how thick and how thin it is, and then maybe we can put a little flower out here. And you can use all different kinds of lines, and you just scratch right through that. Now maybe I can use the nail and just put some lines in here. Maybe I could put some lines down here. Think in terms of the table as a thinner line. Maybe put something right down here. Just maybe a little drapery. Maybe I can think of a nice great big leaf with possibly a little thistle on it with great big points. So that there you see, I'm getting a picture done just by scratching through this surface. And you see that any place that you go in the picture, of course, this is a nice red, this is a green, and then it starts yellow right in here, so that you have all of these different wonderful colors going on in your picture. And then you can use a texture possibly like this over here, and just crisscross it in this manner. And that looks like it'd be kind of fun too so that any tool that would be just rather sharp on the end would be just perfect for working with that. Well, this is just one way, one kind of thing that you could make as far as a crayon etching is concerned. Now it might be kind of fun to see some other kind of etching, and this would be done in a different manner. This is crayon etching, and now I'm going to tell you about another kind of use with the crayons that is a lot of fun too, and that's the crayon resist. Now in using and making a crayon resist, the only necessary things that we have to have are a jar of water, and I have a nice great big jar here, and again I'll need a paintbrush, and I have a paintbrush right here, just a watercolor brush, and then I have a pan of watercolors right here, and I have, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different pretty colors. Then my paintbrush, this, 
and my watercolors. And then I'll, of course, need my crayons. Now, I'll just take my crayons in my hand and take this piece of paper off. And take this one off too, because I won't, I won't need this one anymore. Now I can think in terms of making a crayon resist. And so I'll take a color such as this right here, a nice purple. And maybe I, well, I really do like the water an awful lot, so maybe I could think in terms of making a nice big fish. And so here comes my fish with a nice gill on it, and maybe a nice tail down here, just like this. Maybe I could put another big fin up on top. And now this is about the basic shape, the biggest thing that I'll have in my picture. So now I would want to take this color and maybe another one behind it and another one, and I'll take these three, and then I'll show you how you'd want to color this in. But now this is a little bit different as far as working with the crayon than in working with a crayon uh, etching. We want to not only cover the surface very hard in some places, but like in here, just leave that whole area so that the paper peeks through. And then go real hard in here again and possibly think in terms of maybe having a few little lines like that in here that will show through. Then when we get our whole fish all colored in real nice, and we'll want to make our fish maybe many different colors, because color is really a lot of fun to have in our pictures. Remember that we'll want to think in terms of filling this whole space. So now I might use this color here so that I can have a real nice head on him. And maybe up here I can have a different color for his fins. Now, possibly I can think in terms of putting some nice little things that would be under the water, just sticking up here like this, or other things that would float by in the water. And so I'll just color that in rather solid. Maybe there'll be some other little fish back in here. And remember, you can think in all different sizes of different shapes of little fish that would swim around under the water. Maybe some of you have seen these great big long ones with a great big jaw and great big fins up on top. And then I'll color that in. Now, this is the crayon part of it. So that now, remember, I have some areas that I've done rather lightly and others that I've done very, very hard. So that now I'll put just a little rock formation over here, possibly. And maybe I can just put some lines through that. Now, the next thing that you'll be thinking of will be how are we going to cover this with something that will add not only to the front, but the back of it. So now I'll just take my watercolor and my watercolor brush and get a lot of water. I think it's a lot of fun sometimes to even soak the paper after we do that. Get it real wet all over so that when we put our watercolor on, it'll give a very nice effect of actually being in the water. And I just run it right across. And now this is why we call it a crayon resist, because as we put that color on, it actually does resist the crayon. In other words, the crayon will show through because it won't cover the crayon. So that every place that we work with that color and even actually going right across the body of the fish, we can go right on across, and it gives a little effect of the water being right in front of the fish. You see that? So I really want a whole lot of water, and you notice that in places where I, I didn't cover the paper completely and left the paper coming through a little bit, peeking through, why right away it'll show up in very, very nice fashion so that we work all over the surface of the crayon. And that's what's fun about it, because we're just covering up our other paper with a rather light color. Now, maybe it'll be a little bit hard for you to see some of these things, because we can't see the color, and that's really a disappointment, because most of the time, the color is about the most important thing in some of our drawings, of course, plus the drawing and all of the other things. You really need them all, so you can't say that any one thing is the most important. But when you get finished, you've got a very, very nice crayon resist. And crayon resists, of course, are as much fun, I feel, as the crayon etchings. Because these are two new different, and w different ways of working just with ordinary crayons. So now, we could go ahead and finish that up, but I think it would be kind of fun for you to just have a lot of fun in your crayon etchings and your crayon resists. 
So I'm just going to let you take a look at a couple of crane resists that were done by boys and girls who are in about the same grade in school as you are. And I think they're extremely nice because of the fact that they are using subject matter that I feel well, most of the time does adapt itself best. In other words, it's usually best for d working with a crayon resist. Fish and under the sea is very nice. But another thing that's extremely nice would be a, a city at really after dark, or maybe a haunted village where you could show all of these different cloudy effects going over the houses. Or maybe you've been to one of these movie thrillers where they might show a bunch of cowboys in a sand swept uh, city, you know, that's a, just a ghost town, where you could show all of these different seaweed uh, that would be around uh, all of the different places that would be swept in on the sand. Possibly you might be able to show uh, some of these tumbleweed that would be going down the street, and it would all take on a very eerie effect. But here we have a nice octopus that's in the water. And I think that as we look at it, we can see that this octopus is actually in the water because of the fact that the water looks like it's right in front of the octopus. And so notice that this fish down here is different than the couple of fish that I made. So that this boy was thinking in completely different terms as far as a fish. Uh, the, not only the shape, but also the color. He has a real nice red fin down here, and half of the fish is green, and half is a very light green with a lot of nice little colors in here so that the paper can peek through and it can pick up the watercolor behind it. Then the octopus and his great big arms, and you notice that they are observing one little saying that I think is very clever and it's kind of fun too because it always helps you when you're drawing a picture and that's to have something big, something small, and something narrow, and something tall so that we actually have all of these different things, tall, small, and short and fat and so on. And that's why it's a lot of fun to work with him because we have all kinds of different shapes. And I'll bet that you can think of a lot of different shapes too because it's so much fun to use interesting shapes. Here's another sea picture up here. But this is again a completely different kind of fish than we saw down in the bottom of that one. And this one is a great big one that looks like he's getting ready to eat this little fish. And you see him over here, he's got his mouth all opened up and he's just getting ready to clamp down on that little fish so that that's actually what happens under the water. Now, I don't know if this is a fish or a turtle, but it may be either. This is just the way that this boy saw looking under the sea. And maybe he's never been down where he could see a lot of these different kinds of fish. So these might be make-believe fish, but you can also think in terms of all the different make-believe things that would be a lot of fun to put in your crayon resist and your crayon etchings. So it might be kind of interesting now, just in closing, to give you the idea again, to just tell you again, to make sure that you don't forget how to make a crayon etching. Remember, you just take the crayon and put it all over the paper. Remember, you want to cover the whole surface of the paper. Then you can take your black tempera paint and using a great big brush, and what don't you want to forget? No, sir, you don't want to forget that soap, because if you don't have the soap, that tempera isn't going to go on there as well. So just cover the whole paper then with the tempera and scratch through that. And with the crayon etching or the crayon resist, remember that all you do is work your pattern in with the crayon and then wash over the top of it with some real nice watercolor. So those are the two things that I hope you'll have a lot of fun doing. And remember, this weekend is Halloween and I'll bet you'll have a lot of fun then too. So don't forget these two processes, these two ways of doing things. I think you'll have a lot of fun, and it's really fun for me to show you how to do them. So while you're having fun, possibly after Halloween, maybe you could think in terms of making a real nice Halloween picture by using one of these two different ways, the crayon resist and the crayon etching. And don't forget about all the different nice textures that you can have, because the textures, I think, add an awful lot to your drawings and to your crayon etchings and crayon resists. So until I see you next week, have a good time, and don't, don't eat too much candy on Halloween. Goodbye. Today your teacher has been Mr. Vern Thompson of the University of Iowa. Adventures in Art is produced for Iowa TV School Time by the State University of Iowa in association with WOI-TV. Iowa TV School Time is presented daily, Monday through Friday, by the Iowa Joint Committee for Educational Television. Technical Director is Carol Marshall. Director for WOI-TV, Bob Morrison.
technical consultant J.A. Schneller, directed by Sam Becker, produced by John Ross Winnie.